Hello everybody, Brendan here, and I'd like to talk about the new Avenged Sevenfold record, Life is But a Dream, which came out about a month ago. Now I understand that I'm a bit late to the party, because this album's pretty much been dissected left and right just by a whole bunch of other YouTubers, but I'm actually kind of glad that I sat on it a little bit more, and kind of uh, absorbed it a little bit more. Because, to be honest, even in the 53 minutes that we've got of this album, there's a lot to take in. Uh, it's essentially what the band did with the stage, which was the previous album, uh, the prog elements, the uh, slightly avant-garde elements, all that kind of stuff, and pretty much just amped up to 11. Uh, they took those prog elements and pretty much just went full Mr. Bungle with this one. <laughs> and it's a bit crazy, it's a bit crazy. Uh, right from the first song, Game Over, which is pretty much this, like, it starts out as like a Baroque folk sort of piece before launching into some crazy thrash and just keeps going back and forth between the two. Uh, absolutely crazy stuff. Um, and that song, I think, serves as a really good thesis statement for the rest of the record. Because each song, especially when you listen to the album for the first time, you kind of wonder what you're going to get. Like, okay, am I going to get a more traditional number, like a traditional metal number? Or am I going to get something a bit more off the wall or bonkers or crazy or progressive? Because this album genre hops like crazy. Um, you got the Baroque stuff that I mentioned, the folk stuff I mentioned, but you've also got like jazz, you got the sort of lounge thing going on with some of the songs, you got some disco going on, you got some funk. I mean, the album pretty much has everything. And yet, what's kind of surprising about it is that it's very uh, cohesive despite that fact. Uh, the album, as I said, it's 53 minutes, but it honestly kind of flies by. Like, you don't really realize that you just listened to an album that was that long. It feels more like 35 or 36 minutes, but you've also consumed so much music in that time and consumed, again, so many different styles. So with this album, once you get further into it, like, yes, you can definitely hear the Avenged Sevenfold DNA in there. Songs like Mattel and Nobody and eh, I would say Easier as well. Those songs definitely have more of that traditional Avenged Sevenfold flavor to them despite having some of those avant-garde elements still. Uh, Easier, for instance, it's basically more of a like kind of chugging alternative metal song. But you also get those interesting vocoder sections during the chorus. So it kind of it's still kind of a back and forth, you know? Um, Beautiful Morning, that's another one. That one actually has a lot of event, uh, Alice in Chains stylings to it. The verse is very similar to Them Bones by Alice in Chains. And I, I mean that as a compliment. It works pretty well. Um, but then, the further you go into this record, the crazier it becomes. Because then you start getting songs like The God Trilogy, G, Ordinary, and Death. Uh, the first one, G, is basically like a funk rock song with some even some dream theater stylings in the instrumentals so it's pretty interesting some dream theater some between the berry to me some stuff like that um, then you get to ordinary which is basically more of like a daft punk song and it's pretty crazy in its own right like it's, it's just kind of like a straight up daft punk song and then you get death which is like Avenged Sevenfold's version of like a Sinatra song. So it's pretty interesting and it's very eclectic. And then the whole album basically gets capped off with a classical piece. Very romantic era classical piece. And so, very interesting. Um, what I like about this album, especially with how talented Avenged Sevenfold are, is that this whole eclectic genre bending gives them so much room to kind of stretch their chops as musicians. Uh, I would say the best musicians here by far are Sinister Gates and Brooks Wackerman. Sinister Gates kind of goes back to the old, like, pinkly smooth days of his playing as far as, like, going in the avant-garde experimental direction, and that's pretty cool. Um, Brooks Wackerman, on the other hand, just goes crazy on this thing. Uh, he was already really good on the stage. Like, he had already demonstrated so much technical ability, technical acumen on the stage, but this is the album where I think he really shines the most. Uh, as he demonstrates his ability to indulge in so many different styles, so many different sounds. He goes from thrash metal to even some metalcore to an extent, to some hardcore punk, to some jazz, to some fusion. I mean, he pretty much goes all over the place, but he sounds great when he's doing it. Like, he's, he's absolutely great. Uh, and still, 
is able to inject a lot of personality into the music. Now, I do have some more critical uh, things about the album as well. So, I, I want to get the elephant in the room out of the way first. M Shadows. So, M Shadows is fine on this album when he's working within his range. When he's working within a more comfortable range, like the mid-range area. Especially when you hear songs like uh, Cosmic, for instance, which is a huge album highlight. I love that song. Um, so a song like Cosmic, um, and just any of the softer pieces, the pieces where you can really just kind of mellow out and go into that softer range. I think he's good on that. Uh, Death is another example, the one that has the whole Sinatra crooning. He does really well with that, and I think it's a... Uh, it's an interesting field that I don't think I've ever heard him explore, so that was pretty interesting. Um, problem is, though, it's when he goes into those higher ranges, the higher register, that things sort of... I don't know. You can, you can really hear him strain on those parts. Um, unfortunately, the band kind of chose the two worst songs to pick as singles in that regard, because with Nobody and We Love You, M. Shadows really goes for those high notes, and it doesn't always sound great, and I wish he would just kind of lower it a little bit, because um, his voice is clearly blown to a certain degree, uh, blown out to a certain degree, and then it would just be nice to hear him kind of scale it back a little bit. And there are also some songs that don't really do much for me on the record. Easier, even though I've mentioned it a few times, is kind of bland in the verses. It's mostly just like an alternative metal butt rock kind of song, nothing too crazy. Again, except the chorus, but I wish the verses were as interesting as the chorus. Um, it, it's not, it, the riffs themselves sound like some sort of like Nickelback, like Creed mishmash, like a post-grunge thing. Um, not very interesting. Um, and also, as far as the God Trilogy, I don't think Ordinary is that great either. I, I've already mentioned the Daft Punk comparison, but there's not really much else that happens in that song. And I know some people are going to be like, oh, well, how about that weird sound effect that keeps getting louder at the end? And I'm like, well, that's kind of like Contact by Daft Punk, so I don't know. There's not really much to latch on there. It's just a typical Daft Punk sounding song. <laughs> So that's, that's that, but I will say, like, this record is very interesting, and it'll be interesting to see where they go from here, because they've already been hinting at this album with the stage, which was already progressive. And I'd also like to mention one more thing, which is that even on earlier albums by them, like Waking the Fallen, City of Evil, the self-titled, they had already been kind of hinting at more proggy moments throughout their career. So I think it's very interesting how a lot of fans have been, have felt betrayed by this album, have felt very just wronged by it. Because I'm like, you know what? If The Rev was still alive today, I'm pretty sure he would like a lot of these choices. I'm pretty sure he would enjoy a lot of what's going on here with the music. In fact, fun fact about that, uh, The Rev, so this, this is actually the first album to feature any sort of songwriting contributions from him in, well, basically since Nightmare. Um, I believe he contributed to both Mattel and Beautiful Morning. Um, anyway, so not to mention the fact that you have Little Piece of Heaven, which would fit perfectly in an album like this with its weird cabaret avant-garde stylings. So I think this album is a very bold new direction for them. I think it's going to lead to some very interesting records in the future. And, well, that depends on if they keep going, because I've heard some... Uh, Rumors that they're not going to continue after this, but hopefully they do and hopefully they kind of keep pursuing this direction because it's interesting There's a lot of interesting stuff that could come out of it. So um, As far as rating the album goes, I would give it a four out of five stars. I think it's very fun very bold very challenging and Yeah, there's just a lot of fun to be had with this track list It's kind of like a kind of like a smorgasbord like a grab bag of different styles, but it works surprisingly well. It's very cohesive and the performances are fantastic. For the most part, as I said, then Shadows is a little bit mixed on this one, but still. Good stuff overall, and I really can't wait to see what happens next with their career. So uh, that's all I got. Um, if you like the video, please like and subscribe for more, and I will see you later. Bye.